Switching to Linux is among the best things that you can do to improve your computing experience. It's also easier than you'd think, since Linux is actually easier to use than Mac and Windows, but there are still several mistakes that new Linux users often make that can, in the worst case scenario, bring their time as a Linux user to an abrupt end. So in today's video, I'm going to go over those reasons in the hope that new Linux users will be able to avoid them, or at the very least be aware of them. So, let's go over five mistakes that new Linux users often make, right now, on the Linux Lounge. The first mistake that a lot of new Linux users make is not choosing the right hardware to run Linux on. Linux does support most hardware, including a lot of cool, interesting, old and obscure hardware that Windows doesn't. But unfortunately, Linux doesn't support everything. Generally, hardware that is brand new is the least likely to work with Linux. That said though, there's no harm in trying out Linux with your current hardware, given the fact that most Linux distributions will let you try them before you install them. Though, if you really want a seamless Linux experience, where everything works straight out of the box, it might be a good idea to invest in a computer designed specifically for Linux. For example, the computers made by System76. For those on a budget, buying an old computer known to work well with Linux, for example an old ThinkPad such as the ThinkPad X220 or the ThinkPad T420, or even a single board computer from the Raspberry Pi Foundation or another similar company might be a good idea. As for peripherals, for example printers, the situation in Linux has improved a lot over the years. Generally most hardware will just work straight out of the box, but if it doesn't, a lot of printer manufacturers and other hardware vendors offer their own drivers for Linux. As for other hardware such as game controllers, external audio devices and other tools, I think you'll find Linux to be highly compatible. Certainly, I've never connected anything to a Linux device and had it not work. The next mistake that new Linux users often make is not finding the right software. By that I mean oftentimes new Linux users will attempt to run all of the Windows software they were already using with Wine which is a program that lets you run Windows software on Linux. They do this instead of switching to native apps that are oftentimes better. Just like its alcoholic namesake, relying on Wine is a bad idea. The main reason for that is simply that Wine isn't perfect, and apps run through it often have issues and don't integrate well into the Linux desktop. The other problem with using Windows apps through Wine is that they don't fit the Linux ethos very well. Native Linux apps are generally open source and generally integrate well into the wider Linux desktop. So therefore, you'll have a better and more freedom respecting experience by using them. To be honest though, if you're switching to Linux, you'd probably be better off avoiding closed source software altogether where possible even if it's native closed source software. In my opinion, for the best possible Linux experience, using Windows apps or closed source apps should be a last resort only for when a suitable open source Linux app can't be found. The next mistake that new Linux users often make is that they expect Linux to work just like Windows. The two main differences between Linux and Windows that I see new users struggling with are the ways that various desktop environments work and the way that software is installed on Linux. The way that the Linux desktop works varies between different desktop environments. Generally, it's more intuitive than Windows, but it can often be quite different. For example, some desktops have their start menus in different places than Windows. Others don't have a start menu at all, per se. For example, GNOME has a full screen app launcher that's more akin to Mac OS. Incidentally, in case you didn't know, your desktop environment is basically the program that manages all the user interface elements on your computer. So for example, launching your apps, where all the user interface elements are, how they work, where all the windows on your screen are, how they work, among other things. As for the way that software is installed on Linux, 
Usually it's done from a centralized repository called a package manager. The best way to explain this would be to compare it to an app store on a smartphone. Despite how intuitive it is, sometimes this still confuses new Linux users, since usually on Windows, software is downloaded online and installed using an installer, which by the way is a terrible way to manage software. The fourth mistake that new Linux users often make is one that ties together the previous three mistakes. That mistake is giving up too quickly. What sometimes happens to new Linux users is they'll make the switch and then they run into any number of roadblocks. Maybe some piece of their hardware doesn't work out of the box. Maybe they can't get some specific piece of software to work. Or maybe they can't find a program to do some specific task or another. Maybe they're frustrated by the way that Linux works generally. Instead of putting in the effort to get over these issues and getting to the point where the advantages of Linux can be plainly seen, assuming they can't to begin with, a new user will sometimes simply go back to Windows or whatever operating system they were already using. It's important to note that learning how to use Linux isn't something that happens overnight. It needs time. You can't give up too quickly. On the flip side of giving up, is our fifth mistake that new Linux users sometimes make. Sometimes a new user will switch to Linux and become too enthusiastic. They'll want to try out every single distro out there and they'll nuke their entire install just to try out some other distro. The problem is that these new users don't yet understand what the differences between distros actually are and will consequently sometimes nuke their whole install for something that they could set up easily on the distro they're already using. The only difference between distros that really matters is what model software is distributed using. Generally, you can change your theme, desktop, and installed software in any way that you want on the Linux distro that you're already using, using icon packs, themes, trying out different desktop environments, or switching out the software you're using. You don't need to install a different distribution just because you like its theme or some other superficial aspect of it. The only reason you'd ever want to switch distro is if you prefer the software release model of another distro. For example, a distro like Arch gives you the absolute newest versions of software, stability be damned, whereas something like Debian gives you older and more stable software versions. There may also be some cases where one distro has some issue or incompatibility that another doesn't, but generally speaking, the best distro is the one that you're already using. Finally, I want to leave you with a piece of advice. Linux rewards those who are willing to learn and experiment. If you install Linux and allow yourself to learn how it works, you'll be rewarded with an operating system that is faster, more stable, more secure, more freedom respecting, and just all round better than Windows and Mac OS. If you dive head first into Linux and really apply yourself to learning all about it, then you will have an operating system that is perfectly set up for your needs and beyond anything else that you could imagine. So that's my list of five mistakes that new Linux users sometimes make. I hope that knowing about these five mistakes will help you to steer well clear of them. To all the new Linux users watching this video, I hope that I get to see you in future videos about our favourite Penguiny operating system. And as always, thanks for watching.